Today's big topic, and it's been an ongoing topic, trade talks with China. And they seem to be making progress as deadlines loom, although maybe not in set in stone, for tariffs. But my question to you is more generalized to trade. That is, with the new Congress, especially the Democratic House, how much of an issue is it going to be to get these trade agreements, whether it's the United States, Mexico, Canada agreement, affectionately known as USMCA, or how we negotiate with China or Europe to actually get them to go through Congress without dramatic changes or penalizing the president for completing trade talks? Well, Rick, it's a very good point. I mean, there's really two hurdles. One, you have to negotiate with the other party, be it China or the EU or Canada and Mexico. And then ultimately, you're going to have to negotiate with Congress as well. And I, you know, when I left uh, Congress just about six, seven weeks ago, it was about as partisan of a place as I'd seen it in the 16 years I had served. And so unfortunately, uh, it, not, notwithstanding the fact we're not in an election year, theoretically that doesn't happen until next year, I think it's going to be challenging because so many of the uh, uh, opposition party want to deny President Trump any type of victory, even though potentially it could be a victory for the American people. And uh, it is a little unsettling to have all of this protectionism kind of hang over the economy. Hopefully progress is being made. I led a congressional delegation to uh, China in the fall. I met with Vice Premier uh, Liu He. Kept his cards pretty close to his vest, but it's obvious they are interested in making, uh, I, I believe at least some purchases, or as you well know, a lot of structural issues, uh, not the least of which is forced technology transfer. Um, but once that gets done, I mean, the question is, is simply because Donald Trump's name on it, is a Democrat House uh, going to deny the enabling legislation? No, and I'll tell you, we have some examples to kind of toy with, even though they're not exact. You know, if you look at New York and you look at what happened with their relationship with Amazon, it certainly seems as though we could debate gentrification, we could debate tax incentives, but at the end of the day, I can't imagine that New York is better off without Amazon, the jobs, and the tax revenues it would generate. So it is not out of the realm of possibility that this type of behavior could affect trade agreements as well. Well, as an aside, if Amazon is listening, we've got a lot of great real estate here in Dallas, Texas. We would love to have you. We're, we're, we're business friendly and we love freedom and we love business here in, in Texas. Put that to the side. Yeah, that is, uh, that is interesting. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just fascinated that somebody would want to turn down uh, that amount of economic growth and jobs. Now, you know, the tax incentive package, that's left up to the people of New York. Some of that, you know, maybe a little bit of cronyism. I don't know. Uh, every, so many of the states do it. But to have somebody declare victory out of the loss of so many six-figure jobs, uh, it's a little strange to, uh, to those of us in uh, Texas. But again, sometimes, People just cut off their nose to, to, to spite their faith. And, and, you know, one thing this, this administration has to brag upon is m most people in America are still enjoying the greatest economy in their lifetimes, whether you look at GDP, whether you look at uh, increased wealth creation, whether you look at uh, take-home pay, uh, and the tax, yeah, but you the, know, the you tax know cuts and jobs though, act. And as much as I agree with that, I just heard the same conversation with James Stewart and our own anchors regarding how the Amazon deal would improve that part of New York, bring more money in. It already has a small tax base. Uh, the same could be said for all of these trade agreements. I guess what I'm really asking is, is the political arm of our country so into the poster child or children of these causes that they won't do what's generically right for the betterment of the overall economy. Your final thought. Well, my concern is particularly those on the left want to turn trade agreements into something else besides trade. They, they, they lard them up uh, with all types of different kind of Green New Deal provisions and, and uh, very leftist labor union provisions that have nothing to do with the essential free flow uh, of trade and services. And so they, um, uh, you know, that, that, that's harmful to increase global right. trade and ultimately to have 
positive economic well, growth, Congressman we need better global trade.